Morning everybody, Grandpa Dan here. Well, we've got a little bit of a warm up here. It's only about five degrees below zero this morning, but we don't have any wind, so that's not so bad. Before when it was about 10 below, and with the wind, the wind chill factor was getting up pretty close to 30 below zero. So, boy, you can't be outside much uh, when it's cold like that. Although it is making, uh, making good ice this weekend. I Hope to be able to uh, get out and uh, do some ice fishing here this weekend, so that'll be good. Well, if you listen while I walk, you can hear the snow crunching under my feet. <laughs> well, I got the heater going in the shop here. I'll turn that off here in a bit, but I thought today, uh, I would try to uh, take a couple of the rod bearing caps off. Maybe we can get all four, we'll see. And take that uh, rear main cap off just to see what the bearings look like in those. I was able to get the oil pump out. That took a bit of, a uh, little bit of pounding. Uh, it was stuck in there pretty good. I'll show you some of that crud here. So let me get you set up in the tripod and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I got you up in the tripod here. Turn the heater off so it's not quite so noisy. Let me uh, move this around a little bit so you can see a little bit better. You can see my see my breath here as I'm talking. <laughs> it's kind of chilly. The uh, this oil pump I was able to get out, and as you can see here, it it was pretty uh, pretty stuck in there corrosion but that'll clean up uh, the shaft is stuck in there that's that's pretty common but uh, we'll take this all apart get it all cleaned up get it all lubed up good with uh, I usually use uh, marine gear oil uh, when I'm uh, putting these engines together as a as a uh, an assembly lube and it works good it's real good sticky sticky gear oil and inside there in the gears that's uh that works pretty good to, for uh priming the pump so to speak so we'll uh see if we can get a couple uh a couple of these rod caps off here well maybe start with this one uh just because it's maybe a little closer to you sorry if my hands are in your way there but i haven't done anything on this yet uh i have not taken the the cotter pins out so see if we can get those pins out here and uh, get this cap off. I really don't like cutter pins. <laughs> there. There are a bunch of baloney uh, getting them off. And these here aren't too bad. They're not so rusted, but sometimes they're just really corroded in and it takes a long time sometimes to get them out. But I guess they do their job. They keep the keep the rod bolts from coming apart. And so I got my uh, 17 millimeter socket here. That's what I usually use. Either, uh, oh, no, this is the ones with the 5 8 Sometimes uh, they're 5 8 and sometimes they're 17 millimeter. So let me go grab a 5 8 socket here and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we got here now. Oh my, that's a tight one. Pokey smokes. 
try this one here first. gonna come apart anytime soon. Get this one off. I have not cleaned all the glop out of this engine yet. I, uh, it's been just too darn cold to be out here working on stuff. Boy, when it's uh, even with the heater going in here and I don't have a fancy insulated shop with a built-in furnace or anything. It's just a little propane space heater that I use when it's particularly cold. And it's, uh, it works, it works good enough when it's not too darn cold, but when we've got wind blow or wind chill in excess of 25 below, eh, it's just too cold to be out here working on this stuff. don't do this unless I know the pistons are not stuck tight but these didn't look too bad so let's just try something here put the nuts back on so I don't ruin the threads look at that pistons are moving that's good they'll be coming out pretty easy uh, if I can move the pistons by just uh, whacking on the uh, connecting rod bolts a little bit and I wasn't hitting too hard. I saw some of the shims uh, pop out. There we go. Oh, it feels loose. I can get that out. When these engines stop with both of the pistons kind of in the middle of the bore, it uh, makes it hard to work on them. Usually when there's two pistons up at top dead center and then the two pistons down and bottom dead center, then I've got two of the rods up high and they're easy to work on. That uh, eh, we'll keep tapping on this. Okay, oh, it'll come. Saw some of the shims popping out. That's a good indication that it uh, that it had some uh, had some thicker babbin in it. If it's got thicker shims, let's try pounding that piston down a little bit. We'll just use this because it's here and it's handy. See if we can uh, get it out here. Kind of stuck in there, isn't it? Try a little bit of try a little bit of this here. A little bit of carb cleaner down in there. A little bit of PB blaster along the edges here. From what I could see so far, it looks like it's pretty good. Got pretty good side thrust, Babbitt. So that's good. There 
we go. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, well, let's take a look at this. As you figured out, I haven't had this off yet. Let's clean this babbit up a little bit. So you can see. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing here so far. I'll lift it up after I clean it up a little bit more. Okay, so here you can see the see the babbit. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's pretty good depth in the uh, in the little oil holes there. And the babbit's looking in pretty good shape. It's not cracked anywhere. It's pretty uniform in thickness. Sometimes they're real, real thin here and thicker in the sides. Here you can kind of see the, hold it here a little bit. You can kind of see the, the thickness of the thrust, the side thrust part of the babbit. That's really good. That's really nice and thick. That's partly why it was so hard for me to get it out. You can see it pretty good there, too. So, uh, yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. That's, uh, that's good news. That, uh, that means this engine didn't have, didn't have too many miles on it since it was, uh, since it was overhauled. Here, let me, uh, take you off of the tripod here, and I'll show you, uh, what the crankshaft looks like there. Okay, I got you off of the tripod here, and I'll just kind of bring you in slow. It's not real good light here, but the crankshaft is kind of yucky there. It's uh, kind of dirty. And yeah, it's uh, that's kind of corroded. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it uh, cleans up okay on uh, my polishing fixture. Otherwise, uh, I've got extra crankshafts. I, in fact, I've got another Beavertail crankshaft that's really nice. One that I polished up uh, even even more. And I've had that sitting coated. Uh, I uh, coated it down really good with spray white lithium grease. And that's just been kind of sitting there. But you can see how far the piston I was able to tap the piston down pretty pretty easy actually so if that's an indication the rest of the pistons probably going to come out pretty easy so that's good the bore looked really nice and that'll help to uh, keep the bore in good shape and well let's uh, I'll put you back up on the tripod and um, maybe we'll uh, We'll try taking that rear main cap off, and uh, I think I may, it's supposed to warm up to close to 30 above here this weekend, so I might just wait till this weekend to take the rest of those caps off. It's pretty cold out here without the heater going. So uh, I'll put you back up on a tripod, and let's pull that rear main cap off, see what the rear main cap bearing babbit looks like. Okay, there you go. I got you back up in the tripod here. Let's switch over to my three-quarter inch socket. And uh, the uh, the rear main cap. Turn you here a little bit. I don't know if you can if you can see that better or not. Well, uh, but this one, I notice this one does not have any any cotter pins on it. Which is kind of odd, but uh, the uh, we'll see what it looks like here. Uh, it's amazing how much easier it was to break than the nut on that one compared to the other one. There, I don't want to break off that oil drain tube. 
Okay, and I can switch over to the ratchet here now. Oh, we'll see what this looks like. I'm pretty happy with how the how the babbit on that uh, rod cap looked. We'll see what the rod looks like, the rod side, after we get the piston all the way out. The, uh, as I had mentioned in the previous video, this engine has the later style rear main cap where this part here where the uh, where the main cap bolt goes through is thicker than the uh, cast iron casting on the early 28 models. I assume that makes for a stronger rear main cap. I, I would suspect that that was why they did it. All right, let's see here. Give it a little go juice here. Take a look here. First, let me clean it off a little bit. Well, this is interesting. Never seen that before. Okay, on the uh, on the back part here, you can see the the thrust portion of the babbit is still in place and pretty good and thick. On the center part here, the oil groove has got some pretty good depth to it. So that's not too bad. Sorry that the light isn't so good. But on the inside part, the part that's closest to the crankshaft, at least on the cap, portions of the thrust babbit are gone. Here you can see, and it's pretty corroded, so it's been gone quite a while. It wasn't just from me tapping it with the hammer. So that's, that's just gone. But these parts are still there. And then if the thrust portion of the babbit down in the block, if that's still good, it's good enough. It'll, it'll keep the crank from moving back and forth. It's not ideal, but it would still work for an engine that would run. But here's something that... I don't think I've ever seen before. If you look here in the, uh, try to hold it here, right here, there's a groove cut into the babbit, real straight walls groove. It was cut on purpose, straight through from the middle up to, out to the end here. It's like, almost like an oil groove, only it was cut right in the middle this way. I don't know. I've never seen that before. I don't know why someone would do that. But who knows. It, uh, so the, uh, let's see if this is plugged. It's cold. Hope my lips don't stick to it. Yeah, it's open. It's not plugged. My lips didn't stick to it. That's good. I'm not like the kid on, uh, on the Christmas movie where it's Put his tongue, his tongue on the flagpole when it's cold. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. Here, I'll uh, take you off of the, the tripod again so you can see what the crankshaft bearing or the, the journal looks like there. Okay, I got you out of the uh, tripod here now. Come in slow here so it'll focus on it. Well, it looks worse than it feels. 
the uh, I think the main bearing that'll that'll clean up okay on my uh, polishing fixture. We'll see what uh, the rest of the crankshaft stuff looks like. I'm not feeling any shims here at all. No shims on the block side, and I didn't see any shims on the cap side. So uh, uh, at least on the back one here's no shims there. Well, so there you go. We got one cap off. Feeling pretty good about that. I'll lift that back up here so you can see it again. Uh, a little bit better light here. That's really nice. That's a really good. That's a really good rod cap, uh, Babbitt. That'll that'll be nice. Here you can see better just how th thick the side thrust part of the Babbitt is here. That'll keep the rod from going back and forth on the rod journal so that's good well there you go more to come we'll do some more when it's not so dang cold out and um we'll finish getting the rest of the rod caps and the main caps off and we'll get that crankshaft out well uh looks like the pistons are going to come up pretty easy that's good we'll tap the rest of the pistons out get the camshaft out get the block cleaned up real good and then uh, we'll uh, look it over really close for cracks. Make sure there's no cracks and we could uh, start getting this thing ready to put back together then. That'll be fun. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, I would say Merry Christmas, but Christmas is gone. But you can see all the snow here. We finally got some, we finally got some winter. But the good thing is I can go ice fishing this weekend. So here you go. I love ice fishing. That's, that's good stuff. See if I can catch a few ice cubes. See you later. Thanks for watching.